All right, new day and another laptop that needs to be saved. And this time we have an XPS 9700. This is like a 2020 model. This one was sent in to me because the customer says when you press the power button, the front orange light comes on. I call this the orange light of death. This could actually be something catastrophic like a dead chipset, uh, but it could be something like a corrupted BIOS. So I haven't taken a look at this yet. Let's take a look together to see if we can get this figured out. All right, first thing I wanna do is I wanna see if it turns on. We're gonna hit the power button. Um, I'm trying to see if we are getting an orange light. We are. So when I press the power button, right when I press it, it comes on. As long as I'm holding it down, it stays on here. So uh, this is the orange light of death. What this pertains to is that Whenever we have this issue, um, the, the power button ties to the EC chip, which is an embedded controller. It's running a loop of code, and it's actually uh, checking for key responses and, and to start the motherboard up. Well, that also communicates with the chipset and the BIOS chip. And so all three of those things have to work together in order to start the board up. Well, when we press the power button and the orange light of death comes on, this could mean that we have a shorted chipset, could mean we have a shorted EC chip, could mean we have a corrupted BIOS. So one of those three things have catastrophically failed on this board and is causing this issue. So sometimes this is not repairable, so we'll have to see. So um, let's go ahead and just plug in the charger, see if it does start charging or anything like that. So keep an eye on the power meter right here. Um, so we plug it in. It goes from five volts to 20 volts. So uh, the USB, the way that it works is it, it starts out at five volts, it communicates with the laptop and then negotiates up to 20 volts. And then uh, the laptop will start pulling the current it needs. Now, if we're looking here, the current should actually go to like 0 0.01 or 0 0.02 and just kind of sit there. That means that the uh, LDO is on, which is a linear voltage regulator that powers the EC chip. Um, and then it should sit there, but see how it's jumping around at uh, about 160 milliamps down to uh, 50 milliamps, somewhere around there, it just keeps moving around. Um, that probably means there's some sort of short or it's, starting to, it's trying to start up a power supply. Let's press the power button again, and we're still getting that orange light of death. Now we could try doing a CMOS reset where we unplug the battery, main battery, CMOS battery, and things like that. I don't think that's gonna fix it on this particular issue. Um, so let me pull the bottom off. Okay, and the bottom is off. Uh, we can take a quick look around. The first thing I do see is these fans. These fans are ridiculously dirty. Uh, so I want you to remember that a laptop that is overheating is more prone to having issues like uh, components burning up or shorting out, capacitors shorting out, things like that. So um, this is easy to actually prevent. All you have to do is just have a can of air and you just blow it in your vents on either side once a month. And then that will prevent any of this buildup. Um, so this has obviously never been cleaned or it hasn't been cleaned in a long time. So uh, it's already a symptom that this machine has been overheating. But quick look around here, we have the main battery here. Um, this is a pair of NVMe uh, SSDs and I don't think they're populated. They both seem pretty empty. We only have one stick of memory. Um, and then this is the heat sink here. So, um, so here's the chipset. Um, the EC chip's gonna be on the other side of the board and the BIOS chip's on the other side of the board. So those are the three things that we are concerned with. Uh, one thing that happens a lot on this model is that if you plan to change out your SSD, these heatsink cages are underneath the battery mount here. And so if you don't unplug the battery and take the battery out, then you'll try to kind of shimmy it out in a certain angle and you may end up shorting out the chipset. So this could be a dead board and there's nothing we can do about it at this point. But uh, what I wanna do is I'm gonna turn on the thermal camera. I wanna plug in the charger. I wanna see if we are getting any type of uh, heat spot or something like that that we can notice. So let's take a look at that. Uh, but before we do thermal camera, I did say that we should do a CMOS reset. So we're gonna unplug the main battery and we are going to hold down the power button just for a couple seconds. We're just gonna discharge all those capacitors and then we will plug in the charger again. And I just wanna see if it does anything different. So keep an eye on the power meter here. Um, so it should jump up to about one and a half amps, then two amps, then jump down to zero, then come back on again. Uh, we are just sitting there at the point one, you know, 150 milliamps, kind of moving around. Um, all right, so since we have this kind of bouncing around, it's not posting, it's not trying to power on, let's look at it under the thermal camera. Uh, so thermal camera is up and running. Um, I do see, is that heat or is that reflection? Let's see, the way we can figure this out is I'm just gonna tilt this, see if it changes. And those are just reflections, it looks like. Um, but we do see a heat spot there, don't we? On the chipset. You see how that this heat spot right here just doesn't go away. It's just staying in the same spot the whole time. Do we have a shorted chipset? <sighs> Gosh, okay, that, that's a worst case scenario, by the way, if we have a, a shorted chipset. 
I was hoping that we were going to have some sort of BIOS issue or a EC chip issue. Um, so here's the chipset. We are getting some sort of heat signature on this side of the chip. Um, let's see. Let me, I'm going to unplug the charger. Let's measure in that area. I just want to measure these capacitors and see if we are getting any type of um, short on here. So, so I'm in continuity mode where we touch the probes together and it beeps. And so all these capacitors are going to be tied to different power rails within the chipset, but it will allow us to see if we do have a short here. So no short, no short. Um, okay, well, that's not correct. So um, 0.26, yeah, that's under an ohm. That's 6.9, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. We got another short here. Another short there. No. Another short there. Now, all of these that are saying they're low are re measuring the same amount. So those are probably all tied to the same power rail that are it's internal in here. So there's probably an internal short on here, but I have seen one of these capacitors be shorted, which could be kind of interesting. It's over here that it's showing some sort of um, heat signature, right? Um, let me plug in the charger again. Uh, let's look at the thermal camera right when I plug it in. I want to see what changes. Okay, so all right, so here's the chipset here on the bottom. Keep an eye on that. I'm going to plug in the charger again. I just want to see what happens. So I don't have it plugged in yet. You see how it kind of looks red there, but that just is a reflection probably. I'm going to plug it in. Yes. Okay. So we are seeing some sort of heat right here on the edge, and it's pulsing almost. It's pulsing. So definitely bad news. Um, but just to rule it out, so since we do, we are measuring some of these capacitors are shorter, we can actually inject voltage uh, right here on these capacitors. We'll just put some alcohol in there and see if we get one of these capacitors um, to evaporate. Okay, so maybe we'll use this one right here. So I'm going to inject voltage right there. All right, so we don't need to inject a, a one and a half volts. I mean, the thing is, is that the closer it is to zero, the resistance that we're measuring, the lower voltage we can go to. So we can probably even go down to like 0.5, a half of volt, because a half a volt, we should be able to pull an amp or so. Um, so Let's take a look here. Okay, so we we're going to do it on this one. Um, let's see how many amps we pull. All right, so we're getting one amp at half a volt, and it is heating up over here. So let's take a look under the microscope. I'm going to put some alcohol on here and see if we get lucky. If we get lucky, because if we know, if, if this chipset ends up being actually shorted, then we're going to have it kind of heat up in this area, or maybe the edge of this chip will heat up or something like that. But if it's a capacitor, you automatically see all this alcohol uh, displace. And I've seen that happen one other time, so hopefully they'll get lucky on this. Let's, let's see. Oh, did you see it? Yes. This customer is so lucky. Let's go down closer. It's right here. I think it's that one right there. So I'm going to put some more alcohol on here. Do you see it? You see how all the alcohol uh, evaporates around that? So this is going to be our issue right here, this one. And all we have to do is remove that and replace it, and it should actually fix this board up. So um, I don't see a crack on it physically, uh, but man, man, did they get lucky. All right, so which one is again? Just so I remember, <laughs> I don't want to forget here. So the fourth one down. Yes, fourth one down. One, two, three, four. Okay, so that's the one that we're going to remove and replace. Um, so what we'll do on this, because we are working on a chipset, we could use hot air. Uh, we would have to pr protect this, but uh, we could just use some hot tweezers and try to get that removed. Uh, we may need to use a little bit of hot air, depending on how big the ground plane is on there, but it's not, it shouldn't be a big ground plane on a chipset. So uh, let me get the hot tweezers going. This capacitor we're trying to remove is actually really tiny. Here's a quarter, just so you can see. Um, so it's smaller than it looks like these letters on here. So, I mean, we are working in a very, very tight area, tight tolerances, and it's going to be hard to get it removed. And I don't want to overheat the area at all. That's why we're going to try to use these hot tweezers. And so here are my hot tweezers here. So we should be able to just kind of pinch it and grab it off of there. I'm going to add a little bit of flux to help the solder flow. All right, so let's see if we can grab this off of here. Yeah, 
There we go. All right, so we got it off. All right, so now I wanna test to see if our short is gone. So this capacitor right here was measuring shorted and the short is gone. So it looks like we have resolved the issue. Um, so all we have to do now is just actually replace that capacitor. Now this machine will run fine without the capacitor there, but it's always better to put it back on because it's there for a reason. These things act as a, a filter, um, a bypass filter for any of these high frequency spikes. So uh, let me grab a donor board. We can get one pulled off of there and transfer it over. All right, so here's some donor boards. I need to find one that, that is the same model. Um, these are all 9700s and 9710s. Here we go. All right, so we got a donor board here. You can see the chipsets right there. We're gonna take one of these capacitors off and move it over. Um, but before we do that, I actually want to replace the solder that's on this with some um, leaded solder so it actually can flow better and it's actually easier to solder whatever you have the, the leaded solder. All right, there we go. All right, so now let's grab the chip off the donor board. I'll have to add a little bit of flux. Okay, we got it off. See if we can get it set in place. Perfect. This is the reason why I don't like hot tweezers is always one side will melt easier than the other. And so like this outside is the ground, this inside is not the ground. And so the inside melts easier than the outside. So we have to try to preheat the outside ground plane. There we go. And it never makes a really good solder job. Hate it. That's why I don't like hot tweezers. That's why I don't use them that often. Um, you see how ugly that looks? Now if I had hot air, I could set it down perfectly. I'm just, I'm just gonna switch to a regular soldering iron and see if I can get it to sit down a little bit better. I don't want it to come off though. Yeah, it just doesn't look as good as I normally would have it soldered, but we know that functionally is gonna be good. So let me clean it up and see what it looks like. Get all this gunk off of here. Yeah, look how ugly that looks. Yeah, so it's it's mainly like I said, this inside melts just fine. This outside doesn't uh, because it's a, it's connected to a ground plane. It's going to have a lot more heat dissipation. So, oh yeah. Well, let me try to do it one more time. See if we can fix it. Okay, that's better. I still don't like how it's uh, the solder's flowing. Let's see if I can get this to lay down better. Okay, that's better looking. Not happy with it 100%, but again, it you know you're you're trying to protect the chipset from a lot of heat, and so if we're sitting there, if I use the hot air, yes, I can make it look a lot better, but. And this is smaller than one of the letters <laughs> on a quarter, so it's not like they're going to be able to see it or anybody will be able to see it. I can see it, though, under this 90x zoom microscope. So we'll just clean it up with a toothbrush here. All right, let me blow some air. Try to get all this stuff off of here. Okay. So... The question is, did it fix the orange light of death? Now, I'm hoping so because I don't want this to be a dead chipset. I want this to work. 
I hate whenever customers have to replace their motherboards. Um, these boards are kind of expensive, around $500. So, all right, I'm gonna plug in the charger. We're gonna keep an eye on the power meter. 0 0.05, that's good, 0 0.03, and then it should jump up to about one and a half amps. Let's go. There we go, boom, and we got the Dell screen for a second. So, um, definitely resolved the issue. That's exactly what we were looking for. That's exactly the result we were hoping for. Uh, something, it was still difficult, you know, so like if you didn't know what you were looking for, then it would be a little bit harder to quickly diagnose it like I did. I've worked on so many of these systems, so, because uh, I only specialize in Dell and Alienware laptops, and so my, and my company carries all the parts and things like that. So I've been doing this for about 25 years. Makes it a little bit easier for me. All right, now that the laptop's turning on, uh, we will need to address these other things here. Um, so I'm gonna pull these fans out. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the heatsink too. I'm gonna re-thermal paste everything. We'll get this nice and clean and brand new, and then we'll run full, full diagnostics. But hopefully you guys learned something from this. And if you like the videos I'm doing here, consider becoming a donor board member by clicking the join button below. And I'd love to know your thoughts on this one. And thanks for watching. I saved another laptop.